up in uh, the middle of America, there's a kind of puritanical suspicion of anything that's too sensual or too theatrical. And I always said that in the Midwest, if it doesn't keep you warm and you can't eat it, it's suspect. I learned really in Rome to see and to experience directly sensuality, you know, the sound of splashing water, running my hands over old marble surfaces, the turning of corners into light-filled courtyards, and then again into cool, shady streets. quality. I don't care whether they're new or old as long as they're quality. I think it has to do with the integrity of form, uh, the use of beautiful materials, and the refinement of the finishing and the engineering of those materials. regarding a garden, there's two things I cannot make. I cannot make great views, and I can't make huge old trees. If you don't have the view, then you have to create something that's compelling, that's so wonderful. It's an outdoor room where the scents are so compelling you want to sit there, or the shade makes you feel so cool, or the sound of water splashing. Those are substitutes. as a painter certainly contributed to the way I approach the designing of a space. I don't think you can ever put too much effort into orchestrating the color. Uh, if you're doing an environment, you have to concern yourself not only with the color you choose, but the implication of the color as it changes through daylight, uh, through nighttime with incandescent light. Also the quantities, you know, I often tell clients, if you put a red rug in a white room, you end up with pink walls because the light that bounces off the red flooring changes the color. So you have to know that when you're designing, all of these things, in a way, it's sort of, you have to do it circuitously. I don't regard interior design as an applied art, 
but as a fine art. And in that respect, we really do look upon the interior as participating in art. It's art that you sit in rather than art that you look at. No two people see the color the same way, but in my mind, a soft gray green for me is extremely restful. I mean, there are greens and there are greens, and it's also in the juxtaposition of color. Perhaps environment doesn't affect us as much as we think it does. Or it does. It does. If I may say so, the, the, it's a little bit like clothing. You know, if you're well-dressed, if you're wearing a tuxedo or an evening gown, you act more proper than if you're in jeans. And I think an environment is somewhat that way, too. A, a room that's beautifully furnished and appointed tends to quiet down the movements of people.